Hello, this is Joe Neville, back with another video for the Network Automation, API and Python gang. This is my second video focusing on the new features available in the latest release of Aruba OS Switch, which is 16.04. In the last video, I took a look at the new AnyCLI feature. If you haven't watched that video, please do so, because this video will make a lot more sense if you do. Link in the description and on screen now. Okay, to recap, any CLI allows us to send any single CLI command to an Aruba switch, thus filling in where the developing API lacks coverage. But what if we want to send multiple commands? Well, you can with the CLI batch feature. On the whole, CLI batch is similar to any CLI in that we need to authenticate and get our cookie. But there is an extra step for CLI batch which confused me at first, so I thought I would step through that visually first before demoing it. Okay, the extra step comes from the fact that we can't just list our commands that we want to send, we need to encode them as base64 and add them to a dictionary. We combine these with our cookie and we send them to this new URL CLI underscore batch. Okay, before we look at the code, let's just circle back to step three because it's slightly more complicated than I originally showed you. Here's step three again. At the top here, we have our commands. Now it's a single string for our multiple commands. So we separate them out with the new line character. So there we've got three commands separated by new lines. We take that string and we encode it as bytes. So we can either do that with the B or using a function to turn it into bytes. And it's the bytes that we then encode as base64. So we turn them into this base64 commands. Now, what we need to do with those is we need to add them to a dictionary. But to add them as a value in a dictionary, we need to turn them into a string. So what we do is we take the base64 characters and we decode them as a string that we can then put into our dictionary. So the point that confused me was the encoding to bytes, encoding to base64, and the decoding to a string. I think it will make a lot more sense when you see it in the code. Okay, here's our code. Um, first of all, what I've done is I've uh, commented out part of the code so that we can focus on that step three, so to really drill home what we're doing. And I've run a number of print statements so you can see the different encodings as we go. We will then take those general steps and put them into the full script by just uncommenting this. Here we go. Here's our commands. So what I have chosen to do is turn on OSPF, enable it, create an area zero, then I create an interface zero give it an IP address and put that interface into OSPF area zero. We do that all in one string there with the new lines, as you can see. So I'm going to print that out for you and show you the type. So that will be string. Now, the next part is that the string actually needs to be bytes. So we could just put a B in front of that. Or what I'm going to do here, which I think is a bit more Pythonic, that I'm going to encode that so dot encode for our commands so that will create this object command underscore byte I'll print that out and you'll be able to see the type then we need to encode that the bytes as base64 which we do here so that's base64 underscore command okay so I'm using the base64 dot b64 encode command underscore bytes good and we print that out and then finally we create our dictionary so that's the cli underscore batch base 64 underscore encoded and what i'm doing there is i'm actually decoding this base 64 as a string not to labor the point but it was the encoding encoding decoding that confused me and it's because what we're doing is we're encoding into bytes we're encoding into base64 and we're decoding the base64 into a string so let and then I print that out so let me just run this small section with those print commands so that you can see what's going on
OK, there you can see the string as it is with the new line. So that's our configuration. Look familiar, I'm sure. Class is a string. Good. Then we encode that as bytes. OK, fine. So as you can see, class is bytes. Um, then we take the bytes and we turn that into base 64, which gives us this list of characters. Um, class is still bytes. So we are then taking that. That's list of characters and we're just creating a string of that so that we can put that as the value in the dictionary here so here's our key and this is the value okay so it's encoding encoding decoding into a string good I'll bring this down I'll take out those print statements and I'll uncomment okay so let's go through the rest of this um, I'm hoping that you've watched the first video so I'm not going to dwell on this too much this is essentially the login to grab the cookie we've got our URL object and our credentials then we've got the command which I've already shown you which will create this command dictionary now we're doing our post underscore batch let's tidy that up post underscore batch um, and we are notice this this is important that it's not the same URL it is the CLI underscore batch so it's a different one from our any CLI you have to send it to this uh, the URL with this as the suffix um, and then we are dumping the command underscore dictionary good now what we'll get back is we will get back a HTTP code as 202 if we're successful so I put a small check in there that if we have a response of 202 so I've printed out this line 202 commands accepted so that gives us um, some kind of check but I've also taken this a step further so what I've thought is well if we're going to create this loop back and put it into OSPF why don't we use the API to verify it so I've done this OSPF verify so if we if we're successful here with the 202 we've, we'll go on to create this OSPF verify um, using this command which I'm sure you're familiar with show IP OSPF interface now this is an important point I found that this helps because the switch will be creating the will be creating the interface and putting into OSPF I found that if I just put a small delay here a small pause before I do my verification then I get a successful result with my verification so I'm just sleeping for half a second there with a time dot sleep then I post the show IP OSPF interface here so very much like the previous video uh, we take the result from that and I just print it otherwise so this will only happen if we get a 202 back otherwise we won't do any of this we'll just print out that there's a warning okay good let's show you the switch Here, here's the configuration at the moment so you can see no interface loopback zero no OSPF turned on so we're going to do that all in one go and verify bring this up clear all and we will run our batch okay it's that simple so we've got our status code 202 commands accepted and then I printed to the screen our show IP OSPF interface there's our status and we've got our IP address that's been added and the state it's our loopback okay so let's jump onto the switch and just verify that by the good old CLI
there's the configuration okay so first of all we've got our router OSPF area backbone and I've enabled it then I have my interface loopback zero I put an IP address on there and there's my OSPF command and that's it if I do the show IP OSPF interface command via the CLI and as you can see it's the same I must admit that I found it a little bit underwhelming when I first run this because it runs so smoothly and so efficiently that it just makes it look really easy. But I hope you can see that the way that I've combined a number of different lines of configuration together plus a verification command that this is really just some of the first steps of the power of opening up the switches operating system with an API and unleashing the power of this programmatic network automation approach okay that's it for CLI batch I hope you found that useful I will post the code up on github so please do like comment and subscribe I'll be back with more Python and API focus videos soon but for now I'm Joe Neville thanks for watching and goodbye